Hey guys, what's up? Live. Welcome to live. <laughs> welcome to a very special interview. Today I'm here with Barrett Carnahan, who played Young Crease in Cobra Kai season three. And we're gonna be talking Cobra Kai season three. We'll just talk about it all. So uh how are you doing today, Barrett? I'm doing good, man. I'm 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 stoked to be here. I love your channel, I love what you do. And uh it's 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 brought a lot of joy to a lot of people. Uh, you, you make really, really good content and the fans just love your work. And I don't know, I, I kind of, I, I kind of geeked out a little bit when you wanted me to do this, a fanboy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know that, but thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. You know, I, you, I think you messaged me before season three and uh, like, if you looked on like IM, IMDB and all that, and I know you like announced that you would be in Cobra Kai, but uh, no one knew what your role was, and I yeah. thought you, I thought you were like a Cobra Kai student or something. So um, to see you like on screen, I'm like, oh shoot, that's Barry. That's the guy who messaged me. Like, can't wait for you to see season three. So yeah, uh, yeah, I hit you up. A bit. I think it was like a few days before the season dropped, and I'm like, I just gotta, I just gotta tell this kid he's gonna freak out because I think you were actually one of the very first people that uh, that reached out to me and followed me uh, when we first started shooting. And I was like, man, somebody knows that I'm involved. Already now, granted. So I, I, you know, uh, the credit got put onto IMDb, uh, but at the time, the character's name and the character's name when I auditioned was Jared. Uh, so it kind of knocked off the scent. And I, I think either you or another account put my headshot in front of like the Cobra Kai logo, like with the flames and stuff, and there were like ashes like going up in front of my state, my face, and it said. Can't wait to see Jared in season three. And I was like, they have, they have no idea. <laughs> that wasn't me, but um, okay, it wasn't you. Okay, I think I think I probably found out about you being in the show from that person. Like, and then I just followed you. Got so it. cool. Yeah. Wait. So you auditioned for the role as it was like the name was Jared. For so, your here's, so here's the way that it kind of worked. I um I had auditioned for Cobra Kai twice before. Uh, once for Kyler. I know, I know. I was waiting to see your face. <laughs> Wait, in season before in, season way one, back in season one in 2017, I went in for an audition for Kyler, yeah. and I got a call back. And I, you know, I get, you know, is you know, being a douche kind of comes. <laughs> I don't want to say naturally. But it's 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 it it does. I'll just say that I tend to be a nice guy, but for some reason, it's like it bottles up inside and I'm able to push it out into those roles. But so I, I felt pretty good about it. Didn't get it. Went in a different direction. The guy who got Kyler killed it. Uh, and then I shortly after, I think it was only like a couple months later, I get another audition for Cobra Kai. And I'm like, Oh cool. Another chance. It was for Brooks. <laughs> wait, wait. I, love your, I love seeing your mind blow right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad you didn't tell me about this before because now this is like my first reaction. Wait, so you auditioned for Kyler and Brooks before season one? I did. Yeah. 2017 before they had started shooting and everything. And I like, I remember seeing the scenes where it's like Johnny kicks our asses and stuff. And I was like, I was like, damn, this is going to be pretty cool. This is going to be cool. And I like, I remember delivering the line, uh, bomb, bomb, <laughs> what is it? What is it? <laughs> I think it's like uh, skinny dips and bong ribs. <laughs> skinny dips and bong ribs. Woo! Something like that. And I was like, oh, you're the car guy. What's up, man? Oh, it's a nice place. Like, it was it was so funny. And, like, I, I just went so over the top of it. And it was a blast. <laughs> uh, but, and then I got a call back for that again. Uh, and I was like, I don't feel like I'm right for either of these. Um and so they ended up going to who they went to and they, you know, they crushed it. Uh, and then I didn't go out again until 2019. So it was, it was a couple of years later. So uh, I'd like, I guess I'll tell you about the audition process if you're, if you're down. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was the, so I got the sides and they were for Jared. Uh, and the sides that I originally got went way deeper into crease uh, and, you know, they they were like there was like this long monologue that he had with his captain that like went into his past and everything and really kind of broke down who he was and like what his past was um and it kind of it it made it a little bit more accepting to the way that crease is in cobra kai uh and like in the future like in current day crease um 
And so he was a little bit more mischievous and a little bit more of a smart ass and uh, a little bit more conniving. And uh, then, you know, so anyway, so I got the call back. It, it went great. And then finally I, I got the producer session and that's when I met the big three. And uh, one of the scenes was when the captain, I was sparring with the captain and there was this moment that was written in where he was like choking me out. And I remember flexing like my face and like making myself go red in the face so hard in front of them that I started to black out. <laughs> and then I pulled back and I just kind of like stumbled there for a second and I saw stars, waited for what felt like a whole minute. And then I delivered the second line and, uh, and then the scene ended. And I feel like that might've been the moment that I think that won them over, but who knows, you'd have to ask them about that. But the audition was, it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Throwing punches and kicks in an audition room it was the best. <laughs> Wait, so you, you had to do the fight for the audition. I did. I auditioned with the material that was uh, the outside diner scene as well. Yeah. And also like the stuff with the captain and everything. So yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. But if they were, were they looking for someone with martial arts experience or was they said martial arts experience uh, preferred. Um, I unfortunately don't have any, but I've been, I've been, I'm, I think you would see my post on Instagram. I have been doing fake fighting since I was four years old. Um, and I'd been doing it with my dad because it was our favorite thing to do when I was growing up. So I've already, I'd had enough of like stage combat experience to know, you know, how to do it. Uh, just no martial arts training. I still want to get some eventually one day, but, uh, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Um, so the first audition you said when you, um, were reciting it was what well, it was a scene that was cut it was a scene so the scenes had eventually like when we got to shooting you know the, these episodes are only a half hour so it had to be so condensed but i'm actually glad that they did that because it made crease so much more of a mystery and it didn't really give anything away uh so it made you kind of wonder well, why is this guy the way that he is um so yeah it really went into his backstory and like his dad and um I just I don't want I don't want I don't want to give anything away. Really, yeah. I'll I'll avoid that. Yeah, <laughs> is is the I, I do want to mention just moving forward in this. I know that we're only about two weeks out uh, from from everything from it dropping. I know that this is live, and because it's live, I don't know who's going to be in here, uh, who stumbles upon this. So I just want to kind of keep this interview kind of spoiler light. So just keeping that in mind moving forward. You know, we'll talk about some general things, but maybe not get into too too much of specifics just to, you know, respect everybody. So just want to say that. Yeah, of course. And we'll read some questions from the chat. So yeah, just the, the big spoilers we'll try to avoid. And also we're raising money here. Uh, we're doing a yeah. fundraiser for Homes for Our Troops, uh, a nonprofit organization that builds and donates specially adapted custom homes nationwide for severely injured post 9 11 ve veterans. So, um, Barrett, do you want to do you want to explain like why, um, like you wanted it? Why oh, you chose oh, this one? Uh, you know, it just it was a nice tie in with you know, Crease, you know, being in the military and everything. And also, it's I, I remember the very first movie that I ever shot, you know, when I was 18 years old was a movie called The Pledge, uh, that we shot way back in in uh wheeling west virginia and it was about uh a, a young kid that ended up doing community service at a veteran's home and it's ever since then it's always been something that's been on my mind and you know an appreciation for vets and what they've done for the country and the sacrifices they've made and and this is just a great charity when it comes to giving veterans that have been severely injured coming home and giving them an opportunity to kind of like kickstart their life and give them hope and give them opportunities that they may not have been offered you know they they have custom housing that's that's specific to like every need that they could have like more accessible kitchens and 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 easier bathrooms and wider hallways and and it just it you know it gives them more opportunities you know moving forward and it, it people that are helped by them are you know much more likely to start a family and get a job and go back to school so it's just it's um it's a really really sweet charity so i'm glad what are we up to by the way 
We are up to two hundred seventy-eight dollars. Holy cow! Wow, that's amazing. It is amazing. Like it was wow. like two thirty-eight before we started, which which is nuts. So thank you guys. Thank you, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, anything helps. So um, and it's cool. It's cool that we could do this on here. You know. Like, yeah. It, it yeah. Just, I'm, I'm glad that you're doing it. That's that's really cool that you're that you're giving that a go. That's nice. Yeah, this is the first time I'm doing it, but now that I know, now that I know about it, like mm -hmm. definitely we'll do this more. It, it's sure. it's very convenient, you know. So yeah, so it, it it's nice. Um, do you want to uh, talk to everyone about how you first got into acting? What sure. sparked it? So um, when I was my my dad uh, was an actor back in the day. Um, he ended up being on this show called I-40 Paradise that was on this network called the Nashville Network back in the early 80s when it's kind of funny because right now everybody's kind of competing, you know, with like streaming platforms and stuff. It's crazy. Well, back in the early 80s, everybody was trying to get a network going. And the Nashville Network was this really, really early you know, network. And on it was this sitcom called I-40 Paradise. And my dad was on that show as the kind of goofy... Uh, <laughs> Uh, mechanic so it's always kind of been in my blood but when I grew when I you know started developing like you know a, uh, a personality as a kid I got obsessed with Raiders of the Lost Ark and I know that you're a huge Indiana Jones fan so I know you'd appreciate that yeah man so it started with with watching Indiana Jones just over and over and over again and the and back then when I was like four years old you're young enough I don't know maybe this is just me but I was young enough to think that what was going on on my TV was actually happening. So I thought Indiana Jones was an actual person. And then one day I popped in this Star Wars VHS. <laughs> and here comes this guy. I'm Han Solo. <laughs> Not from the Millennium Falcon. And I'm like, Mom, why does Han Solo look so much like Indiana Jones? And she was like, well, it's, just, it's the same guy, sweetie. He's, he's an actor. <sighs> Blew my mind. So yeah. that changed everything. And I was like, well, whatever that guy does, I want to do. Um, so, so yeah, from then on, I started doing like community theater and stuff when I was about nine years old. And I just, I got hooked, man. I couldn't stop from the time when I was like nine years old to the time when I eventually moved out to California when I was 19. I was just doing play after play after play, musical after musical after musical. And um, yeah, moved out to California when I was 19. And from then, on, that's a long story, and it's been a long road, but it, it takes a lot of perseverance and a lot of patience. Um, but yeah, so that's it's all it's all thanks to Mr. Ford uh, that I wanted to become an actor. So yeah, that. he he's my he's my favorite actor. So um, yeah, so we have in common. Also, Raiders. Fun fact is Martin Cove's favorite action film. Yeah. Yeah. So that I, I when we when we were talking about like favorite movies and stuff and he said that I was like, Oh, that's great that we have something in common. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So so do you want to talk about uh meeting with him and oh yeah, him? oh man. So I we rolled the whole first day was just a trip, man. It it really, really was. Uh so but specifically about meeting Marty, we were rehearsing the diner scene where Jesse comes in and you know treats me like crap. Uh, and next thing you know, I'm just kind of looking around like between takes and I see, I see this guy, this guy with like this blonde, like slick back hair, kind of saunter in with like his round sunglasses on and his black, like sleeveless shirt. And I'm like, son of a bitch. There he is. <laughs> like, he owned the room when he walked in. Yeah. It looked so damn cool. And I knew that he was there. And so now I had like this added layer of like anticipation and like nerves inside of me because like I wanted to do the best that I could possibly do. Um, and so, but what's funny about that is like, I wasn't being a badass or anything. I was still like being this like meek little like butt boy. <laughs> You're this badass who I'm basing the character off of and he gets to see me be like all meek and like, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, and you know, sorry, let me go back to sweeping the floor. So I was like, oh man, I hope he, I hope he sees it. And so, uh, I think it was one of the, I, I think it may have been, I think it was, I think it was Hayden who came up to me and was like, you want to meet Marty? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I go up and I, he's behind him and, uh, 
And he, he goes up, Marty, Marty, he, and he taps Marty on the shoulder and he, and he turns around and he goes, damn, he does look like me. <laughs> like, immediately there was this like rite of passage. Uh, and he, yeah. and, like his eyes just lit up and we, you know, and we, you know, we talked a lot that entire day. I mean, he was, you know, Jesse was there and killing it. So like, he was just so excited to see his son, you know, be a part of this legacy and also see somebody that is able to like actually dive deeper into this character like he he was just so appreciative and so excited to be there and he was like constantly taking videos in the corner and it was a trip man it was it was a trip that was a fun day yeah did he give you any uh advice on playing the role he did i i remember um you know it it, it was kind of difficult because this version of crease is so different than the crease that we've all gotten to know uh, but if, if I can remember correctly, I, I believe I remember him saying, well, first of all, he was going, he, you know, he talked about like how Crease is so misunderstood uh, based off of what eventually happens. We won't get into that. But um, but I remember, I, if I remember correctly, he talked specifically about like how Crease listens and how he observes. And that really really stuck with me the fact that he was talking about how he's just always calculating every situation that he's in and luckily the script allowed me to incorporate a lot of moments where i was just being silent and i was able to just watch and observe so when he talked about like how crease listens and pays attention uh that was that was that was that was a good note from him for sure yeah that's a good I'll have to look out for that next time. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I rewatch, I'll, I'll look out for that. Uh, was there any, like, like the way you delivered your lines, like the, the speed of a line or like maybe an action, like with your hand or something that kind of resembled his performance? Yeah, for sure. I, I, you know, I wanted to, um, <sighs> There was a lot that went into this, and I'm sure you have some other questions that'll kind of dive into it, but just as far as physicality goes, uh, that was something that I really, really wanted to pay attention to. And something that I would notice about Marty is, is that, you know, when he listens, he kind of, you know, he, you know, he kind of like tilts his head down and he just kind of like looks around. And I didn't, I didn't want to do like a full on impression of him. And I didn't really do that much when we were in the diner scenes. Uh, you know, I was kind of reacting what to, you know, to what was around me. What, once we got to like Vietnam and he had been hardened a little bit more, just wanted to give him that this, the walk, you know, there's, there's a specific walk that Marty kind of has where he kind of has a saunter. And I kind of wanted to capture that, uh, when he's listening, you know, he kind of tilts his head down and kind of observes everything around him. There was one moment specifically, Marty has this, like this amazing jaw. Uh, an amazing chin that is just so interesting to look at. He has such an interesting face. Um, and there was there were a few moments when I would get like uh, flustered or if I was getting excited about something. I think it, at, at the end of the scene with the captain uh, and when I say all in sir, my I kind of flex my chin out a little bit more and I put the bottom lip out a little bit more. And there's other moments kind of scattered throughout that I kind of like precisely place those moments in there. And I also did kind of change my my dialect a little bit because, you know, Marty has kind of this like Brooklyn uh, thing kind of going on. So it's like, you know, when I have the line to to twig and I say, I say, hey, get your shit together. All right. No. The only thing you got to worry about right now is survival. I kind of changed that to, hey, hey, come on, hey, get your shit together. All right. The only thing you got to worry about right now is survival. And it's just so he had this this thing that I really wanted to do because something that's frustrating to me is when I see actors playing the young version of a person and they talk completely different. It's frustrating to me, but I didn't want to do like, like I said, like a, a total like impression of him. I just wanted to be ever so slightly. So there were like a lot of like physical things along the way that I think kind of went the distance. And luckily I think people noticed. Also there was a scene with, with Twig and Ponytail when after he takes the photo away, when I stand with my arms crossed, I don't know if this is flipped or not, but he always does the right hand over the left elbow. And I, I just picked one moment. I didn't want to do that again. I just wanted one. And luckily they used the wide and you saw me kind of cross my arms the same way that Crease did. Um, I don't know if people notice that or not. Uh, but uh, yeah, there was a lot. I'm rambling. I'm going yeah. On. No, no, it's, it's, it's interesting because I mean, it, that, 
that must have been tough because you're not, as you said, you're not playing like this. This you're not exactly playing the same character because he's been through so much, and you're playing the before. And um, but he is still the same person. So yeah. I did, I, yeah. Well, it's you know it's tough because you know I mean Alden Ehrenreich who played Han Solo in the Solo movie, which I loved. I, I just love that movie. And I loved his performance. I think he did such a great job of making it his own, yet having a persona that kind of mirrored Han Solo was, but it had to be Han Solo 10 years earlier. So this is Kreese 16 up to, up to 19 years before we meet him. So like I said, like going into his past and everything, you know, ever, you know, David says it, you know, he says, you know, Dex plays why he's such a freak. So like it's, it's established that, that there is this, you know, known, uh aura like around this kid that he's that he's not cool he's not cool so it's like that was a big thing for me with crease where he's like i need to have uh personality traits of him but it can't be charismatic it can't be forceful it can't be a aggressive maybe a, maybe a little bit aggressive when it needs to be but i wanted to make him much more soft-spoken much more meek uh not quite as charismatic, a little bit more straight laced, not showing quite as much emotion, you know, with his past, like he was kind of raised to not show emotion. And then it's not until later on in years when he kind of found his passion and what he wanted to do that made him the person that he was and made him comfortable. Chris, young Chris is never comfortable. He's very, very self-conscious. He's, you know, he's, he's always like second guessing everything that he does and he doesn't, you know, he really cares too much about what other people think about him and it bothers him. So yeah, it, 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 there needed to be an essence of him, but a completely different person because he does go through a transformation. So yeah. yeah. Were there any uh, specific scenes from either the karate kid or Cobra Kai that you were like studying or paying attention to when you were trying to recreate those actions and the lines? Yes and no. Uh, because I didn't, like I said, I didn't want to do like a complete impression of him. So I didn't watch too much. I watched just a little bit just to get his, his mannerisms down and his characteristics, you know, his, his you know, characteristics down enough just to get who he was at that person and find those moments that I can plant earlier. Um, definitely like the scene in the, uh, you know, in Cobra Kai, in the dojo, when, uh, when Pat and Ralph come in. Uh, that was that was a big one that I watched because that was like his biggest scene. But then others as well, because there were just so many other moments where he, you could just watch him just watching and listening. So I didn't watch it too much. I maybe watched through scenes maybe like two or three times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just to get a taste. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was going to ask something, but I forgot. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I was, I'm just trying to think. Um I don't know. I forgot. Oh well. <laughs> I, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just look at my what question. Are we up to? Oh, what are we up to? Yeah. 303. Woo! Yeah. Thank you guys. That's, you. that's, that's so crazy. It's, it, it's, it's really good. And it's going to a good cause. Thank you guys. And we have 403 people here. Oh, 398. <laughs> oh, sad. <laughs> yeah. We just, we just lost. Oh, 402. It went back up. <laughs> okay. Um, so when you, got hired for season three and then um when you filmed it it was all supposed to be on youtube yeah. and then all of a sudden you get the announcement that you're going to netflix what was your first what was your initial reaction to that oh i mean it was just it was just pure adrenaline uh because uh now all of a sudden i mean god bless youtube uh, for for giving you know Cobra Kai the the platform to bring the show to life, I mean you and like so many other people were just so grateful to have it. Um, and then when it got announced that it was going to Netflix, like everybody was just like, "Wow, so many people who are not like hardcore fans are going to get into this show." And that was that was the most exciting part is that, you know, here you had the show that had such a crazy cult following. And now it's just opening up the gates to just share with the rest of the world because there's so many people out there that like weren't karate kids 
fans, like weren't Cobra Kai fans that all of a sudden got this opportunity and like heard from word of mouth and people were like, oh, Cobra Kai, people talking about that. Where, where can I watch it? Netflix. Okay, I'm going to watch it tonight. So it was just, uh, it was, it was really exciting to think about just how many people were going to watch. And I didn't know, nobody knew like how big it was going to be. And then all of a sudden it's number one for what, like, what was it? Two weeks or something yeah. like that? Something like that, yeah. Unbelievable. You're talking about when it was on, when seasons one and two came out. Yeah, when they came on. Yeah, so. My favorite, here's my favorite thing about Cobra Kai. Uh, what, you know, beyond like story and, 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 and all of it. My favorite thing about Cobra Kai is that it is in itself an underdog of a show. That's what I think is so cool about it. You know, that it, that it had this kind of like opening, not, you know, it, it wasn't on like the biggest like streaming platform, but like it was still incredible. Uh, and then all of a sudden, once everybody gets access to it, it just, it, it kills the competition. <laughs> so I, I love that it, the show is about underdogs and the show is an underdog itself. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The, yeah. Sh the, the show has a great story, but also the story about making the show and getting on Netflix has a great story. Yeah. So it's, it, it's all it's just ironic. great. It's really ironic. It's really cool. So. Yeah. And you watched the Karate Kid movies um, when you were a kid? I had not watched all three. I had seen the first one. Uh, and, you know, I loved it. Who doesn't love watching, you know, a kid take on the bad guys and, and come out on top? Um, yeah, I, I had watched it. It had to have been when I was really, really young. And I would revisit it every once in a while. Um, because I just, I, I loved watching Ralph. Ralph was just so charming. Um, there was just, there was such like an every kid feeling to him. Like mm -hmm. he represented all the kids out there that have ever felt like an outsider. And he just mastered that. And I loved, I loved his work in the outsiders as well. And like, he just, man, he's just got so much charm and charisma. Yeah. He was, yeah. Daniel was like, you know, up there with like favorite, like movie characters of all time for sure. Yeah. And what, what's great is like, for you, how you felt with Daniel is how I felt with Miguel. Miguel is my favorite character. I know, I know, um, you said, you said your favorite character is Johnny. I think he's the best written character. I think he's the best character in the show, but my favorite's Miguel because he's like my Daniel, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. No, exactly. And, and that's, that's why a lot of people, you know, kind of gravitate towards Miguel. Yeah. He, he kills it. He does such a good job. Um, yeah, but no, he like he is the Daniel of the series for sure, and it's so funny that you know he's being taught by Johnny. It's just <laughs> it's such it's such a treat. This show is just such a treat, and it always just goes somewhere where you don't expect it, and it doesn't end up going like you may have expected it, but you don't expect it the way that it does go. Yeah. It's, just, it's always throwing curveballs. It's great. I'm so I'm so lucky to be part of it. Yeah, it's like if Daniel, there's like a lot of like discussions on if. Daniel was taught by Kreese and if Johnny was taught by Miyagi, how would it play out? It's all about the the mentors, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And um, what were your thoughts on Kreese when you watched the karate kid, like way before you were, in, you knew the show? Oh yeah. I mean, he was just the, the ultimate big bad. It was, I mean, it, like, uh, like once again, I, here I am, you know, not even realizing it you know, at the time, but like, little did I know, eventually I would go back and like, really, really observe those scenes for my own performance. Blows my mind to think about that. But he really just exuded this whole bad guy persona aura about him. And like, you just knew that he was the bad guy. You just knew it was obvious. And that's, uh, you know, they, the, the uh, what is my, there's, there's a term for it. Uh, the big, the, the, the heavy, yeah, that's what it was. Back in the day, like the guys that were like always, you know, in every episode that were like the bad guy in that episode of like, that, you know, those serial TV shows and stuff. Um, yeah, they were the heavy. And Marty was the epiphany of the heavy. Um, and he killed it. You know, it's, the role is so iconic. So, uh, yeah, I just always knew that, you know, he was like the epitome of a bad guy, which is cool. Yeah. And playing, so playing this role, it's... You you you've never done anything like this, right? Where you've no no, I haven't. Yeah. So 
would you like can you compare it to your other roles in terms of like how challenging it was yeah so um you know i've done quite a wide variety of of stuff um i did you know i've done some multi-cam stuff i've done a lot of multi-cam stuff which i love uh you know with an audience and four cameras done some disney and nickelodeon shows thunderman's was my very first you know job in california uh which was which was amazing and i i learned so much um and i had done some other serious roles uh but nothing that had so much uh focus on this character because if you if if, if you look at it, it's almost like there's this uh, movie journey scattered throughout this. If you put it all together, it could be like a short film uh, that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So I had never really been in the spotlight before, and that was a big deal. And it was it was a little intimidating because it's like this this is this character's story that we're telling right now. So I I had never really had that experience before. Uh, and it was, it was a huge blessing and John, Josh and Hayden were like there every single step of the way to guide me. Uh, yeah. So it was, it was, it was definitely nerve wracking, uh, to, to be like the center of, of attention for, for those shoot days and for that story. So yeah, that was, it was a little scary to sum it up. For sure. For sure. And also, um, I meant to tell you, you know, I, I watched Thundermans. I, when did I, I like binged a whole thing, like maybe a year or two ago. And, you know, I, I didn't, I, I was, a, I, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't like, like a huge, like, st like fan, like I am of Cobra Kai. So I saw you on the show and I was like on Cobra Kai and I'm like, awesome. And then I searched you up on IMDb and I'm like, wait, that's Link from the Thunderman. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, cause I had, I had no idea. I didn't make that connection. And I, watch a show so pretty um, different, huh? what pretty different huh <laughs> yeah well oh, oh the sh for sure for yeah. sure yeah it's the, role, such the role couldn't be like more opposite yeah oh yeah yeah and now you're joining like you're joining the the crew of the nickelodeon to cobra kai you have like jacob bertrand and Peyton mm -hmm. list who are on like yeah. nickelodeon disney coming mm -hmm. to cobra kai now yeah you're on that crew yeah, so it's kind of, uh, I, I never really, so every time I would go there, uh, I, every time I would fly to Atlanta, I had like one or two days of shooting and then I would go back home. So I was always going to the second unit. So like I hardly got to meet anybody. Um, I really wanted to like meet, uh, you know, more people. Tanner ended up coming to the set on the day that we were doing the diner thing and, and he, you know, came and kind of like checked it out and. I got to meet, I got to meet Billy, uh, you know, briefly. And that was, that was pretty cool. He gave, he gave me a, a, a Cobra Kai, uh, headband. No way. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm out of town right now. I'd, I'd show it to you, but it's, it's pretty cool. That's he was, awesome. he was over in his car. He's like, Barrett, come over here. I was like, <laughs> yes. <sensei. laughs> and I walked over and, and he gave it to me. He's like, these are rap gifts. And I was like, this is, this is unbelievable. <laughs> the fact that you're handing me. Uh, yeah, I didn't really get to meet most of the cast, so that was so that was unfortunate. Um, but I, you know, we were hoping I, you know, we were hoping that there was going to be like you know a you know a screening earlier last year. Uh, that unfortunately didn't happen because of COVID and everything. Totally understand. Um, I was hoping that I would get to meet everybody there, but uh, hopefully in the future, I'll yeah, get other people. So we'll see. Were you not at the uh, rap party? No, no, I wasn't. Okay. Um, when was the rap party? What? It, it, it's oh, usually in Atlanta. No, I think I left like the day before the rap party or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that sucked, but eventually I'll meet everybody. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Around the, you know, it, this industry is so small. Every job that you go to, there's always somebody that like knows somebody that you've worked on with somebody else, or you come in contact with somebody that you have worked before. It's just everybody knows everybody. So eventually I'll get around to meeting everyone. Yeah. It's going to take, you know, maybe a couple decades. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how many times did you um, meet with Martin other than that one time at the diner? You, you know, I, I I didn't get much. I mean, he his schedule was was pretty packed. 
Um, so he dropped by uh, in the second episode um, for a little bit, but he wasn't able to stay stick around for too long. So the most time that I got with him was on that day. You know, I would talk to him, you know, a little bit here and there, you know, whenever we weren't busy and stuff. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I wish that I got more. But, I, you know, we, we talk on the phone every once in a while. Um, you know, he would, you know, he shared my thoughts, you know, shared his thoughts about, like, season three uh, early on, like, you know, when, when he was, you know, talking to the guys about it and everything. And so I just kept hearing, like, all the good things about it, and I, I wasn't able to see it. Uh, so I was just for like over a year, I was just like shaking in my boots, just like hoping that it turned out well. Uh, and I'm so glad the fans loved it. Yeah. What have, what's been the um, reception for you, especially since season three, what have been, what have people been saying to you about your. Oh, I, I have, I, I've really just been overwhelmed with the positivity uh, that's come from the fans because I'll be honest with you, man doing this role was so nerve wracking and for the, for the months and months and months after that I had done it, I just kept coming back in my mind, going back to thinking, I hope the fans love it. I hope the fans accept me as young crease. I'm hoping that there's not going to be like, you know, a, you know, a Twitter storm of people saying this isn't crease. You know, this, this kid can't pull off crease. Uh, you know, that's not him. Yada, yada, yada. But, Almost everything that I that I have seen has been positive, and there's just been so much love. And I, I guess I'll just say right now, like I, I see the comments that everybody makes uh, about it, and and the the respect that people have, uh, and the love. So it's it's just been it's been really really overwhelming and heartwarming uh, to know that this fan base that is just so amazing and has so much love in it accepted me with with you know with with open arms. It's just, it really is just like one of the greatest feelings in the world. Yeah. And that's a scary thing. I mean, as you know, like fan bases can be, you know, they can be very, very unhappy people if they, if they, if they're not satisfied. So mm -hmm. it was my, it was my first, it was my first interaction with, with fandom. Uh, and that's, that's a scary thing, but it, it couldn't have gone better. Yeah. Cause I, I know you mentioned uh, Alder, Alden Aaron Reich with solo. Uh, I thought he did a good job too, and but you know you you, you do have those people who are always gonna say something. Everybody has their opinions. Yeah, you're entitled to it. People are entitled to their opinions. For sure, um, for sure. I had just never been the uh, the uh, the victim of that. I've never been the center of that before. So it was it was it was nerve wracking for sure. But it's been great. It's been great. yeah. Yeah, I, I think it was. I think it was really good. I think there was a lot of things that they did well to make it work. Like, for example, like cutting between like crease, like you see like older crease and then it cuts to the flashback. It kind of like ties together. It's not just like, like, you know, it, it goes back and forth. So you're like believing he's looking at the the frame of his younger self. So it gives it more of a thing. And and also, as, as you've mentioned, you're not like playing crease one year before Karate Kid. It's right. there's a there's a long gap and you're 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 pretty much a different person you're you're becoming that person yeah so. yeah that's why i was so nervous because i mean because since i was taking a different take on him and thinking like this is him 19 to 15 years earlier uh there's a chance that some people be like this guy doesn't act anything like crease um so that's why there had to be those little tidbits those little those little physicalities um that were planted so luckily people appreciated it yeah it was, it was really good it was really cool to see um so how did your family and friends react when um they got when you got the role were you able to share it with uh i couldn't tell a soul um i, I wasn't allowed to tell anybody but I, I told my i told my family and, and my my dad and my and my my stepmom came to set one day uh and they were able to see like a little bit so i told my family and that was it uh to keep that secret was so tough. It was so tough, man, because every time I would see somebody talking about Cobra Kai and being like, oh, I love it, they would know that I was in it, but they would have no idea. So I, I just knew that, like, people kind of, like you said, like, people were like, oh, he's just, a, you know, he's probably, like, you know, a, another recruit or something like that. And, like, when people would, like, say that, I'd be like, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. We'll just have to wait and see. 
So yeah, all the all the all the like diehard fans like came out of the, like some people that I know, and they were like, "You're what? <laughs> You're young Chris?" Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. That's funny, and yeah. it must have been tougher because, right? Weren't you expecting it to come out in the summer of last? Yeah. Is that when it was? Or, or a spring, spring. Oh yeah, wasn't it supposed to be like? It was supposed. To, they said, they said twenty twenty, but um, it usually comes out in the spring. So that was yeah. the expectation. So then, like, what was that like? Um, kind of expecting that, and then waiting more time. Was it was it harder? Was it a lot of? Oh harder? yeah, it was hard because I because I didn't know I I didn't know. So I was I was going on to you know your channel and going on to other people's <laughs> channel and seeing what the rumors had been. Uh, constantly and that's what I was going off of so I would hear March and be like okay March okay good that's exciting June okay I can wait till June I can wait till June I'm sure yeah uh September okay I'm getting a little impatient it's this sucks but I'm you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna stick with it and so I just kept getting pushed back for good reason um and uh it was it, I, I felt like a fan I totally yeah. felt like a fan so you were coming to my channel for updates. Yeah, where else would I go? <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have to bring it up and I have it right here. Okay. I have to bring this up. You know what I'm gonna say. Oh uh, right? here, here we go. I wish I had mine. I wish I had mine. Go ahead. Do do you have all, all I, have, no, I don't have all of them? I have that one. Uh, a friend of mine was in a comic book shop. Um and she's like, you're, you're in this. Right. And I was like, I was like, yeah. She's like, do you want this? And she showed me that one. And I, yet I couldn't tell her that my older self was literally on the cover of that. Uh, so yeah, so I had her and I was, I remember flipping through and I remember getting to a scene, uh, that involves a certain someone. And I'm like, hold up. That's whoa because it was tying in to what we had already shot. So, and then it gets to a certain line and, and Chris says, Chris says to Johnny, he says, uh, he says, uh, you know, so, you know, so and so before, never mind. And he backs up and I'm like, I know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh I know exactly what he's talking about and nobody else does. That was a pretty, that was a pretty powerful moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So everybody watching, you know, if they have it, I'm sure they know exactly what we're talking about. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I saw your your video about that. And like you, you were pretty close. In fact, yeah, you were pretty damn close, like with all that. So that was impressive. That was yeah. Impressive. So if you guys don't know, uh, this is the Cobra Kai comic book. I'll put it right here. And um, there's four issues. And, you know, I was reading them on the channel i was a huge fan of them and then i got to like it was just for a fun read you know it was it was like johnny's perspective it was cool but then we got to that third issue and then there were there were uh cl there were pieces from crease's past and i'm like wait a second like this is this is crazy so and if season three they said it's going to explore crease's past i was like this has to tie in and i i said this back in february of yeah. 2020 a while ago which like, like that's the one thing, like if I could get any theory, right. I'm so happy was that one because it's, it, 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 I like said this before it expands the universe. It's not just like, Oh, an Easter egg from season one or from season two. It's from a comic book. You have to get a comic book and then it ties in. It's, it's yeah, crazy. You do research on your own. You gotta, you know, you gotta trust in your fandom and kind of seek out this stuff. It's out there. But it's yeah. you know, there's there's Easter eggs like hidden all throughout. But it's like it's up to you to be as big a fan as you possibly can to figure it out. And also there was a there was a, a little flashback uh, cube in there that had Crease and her sitting at a booth. And I just remember looking at it, and being like, "Oh my god, that looks so much like me." It was so weird. It was it was really really trippy. Um, and when did that drop? That dropped in February of 2020 so we had it had been several months since we had shot all that stuff so yeah, yeah that's so cool yeah I it, love, it's I awesome love, i love what the big three and, and netflix are, are doing the fact that they're just like expanding and stuff and you know it's pretty cool it's pretty cool
Yeah, I, I was I was blown away by that. Um, did you uh, that scene at the booth or the or the, from the comic was that ever a uh, scene or something that was? No, no, we never did. Uh, there, there wasn't too much. There was, you know, I met her. Uh, you know, I got into the kick-ass fight, won the girl, and then we jumped immediately to, uh, you know, me leaving for Vietnam. Um, because we were so, you know, the the thirty-minute episodes, like you have to fit so much in there, and there, like, there was a lot of story in season three. So such amazing story in season three. So they had to fit what they could within those constraints. Um, so there wasn't there wasn't too much to to the relationship. There was a lot like implied. So uh, so yeah, and yeah. and I thought that the bus scene actually did make uh, it did. Yeah, and it's lit. It's exactly the it's, same. it's the same thing. It's like it looks like it, it was crazy. I was like yeah. I was blown away. Um, it it was awesome. And yeah, there was you know I was making a whole big deal out of Chris. Like you know he was telling Johnny the story about like himself in the flashback and um because johnny was dealing with stuff with ali crease was kind of giving him advice but crease couldn't finish the story and i'm like why would they leave this cliffhanger and then i don't know and i yeah i i didn't guess what what happened in the season that actually happened i didn't guess it unfortunately no. but um <laughs> but still I, I'm, I it was definitely better than what i thought <laughs> So you guys could you guys can watch watch that. I have a video on the channel. Um yeah. and I have to ask you because you um mentioned um not having enough time, like you know, with season three, like you know, there was there's still so much to explore with Crease and um with the relationship. Can I say the name or no? Sure, go ahead. It's it's in the comic and it's yeah, yeah it's with Betsy. It's in the comic, yeah, yeah. Bet Betsy, um, his girlfriend, like, you know, there's there's stuff there that we don't know. Uh, his time in Vietnam, even after, um, the like the last thing that we see in season three, there's still more after that and before Karate Kid. If the writers have talked about doing spinoffs, going like expanding the universe and exploring like people or stories from the karate cobra kai universe but maybe their perspective so if there was a young crease spinoff show netflix producing it would you be on board if that was a thing 100 percent, i would be on board and that is all i'll say because i have no idea where it's gonna go i have no idea you know what the big three's plan is i have no idea what netflix's plan is all i can say is that of course I hope it happens. Uh, I'm just so lucky to have had this opportunity. Uh, and I'm, I'm so lucky to have, cause this show is already jam packed with like so much good. So for them to, you know, take the opportunity and think that I am good enough to, you know, take these moments that completely deviate from the amazing story that's going on in this moment. I just, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. So, you know, man, we'll wait and see. Uh, there's, there's zero confirmation. There's, you know, there's nothing. But um, of, of course, that'd be amazing. I'm, I, you know, what do the fans think? I mean, I'm, I'm sure they would love it. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Just fingers crossed. Yeah. Let us know in the chat. Would you want a young crease spin spinoff? By the way, we're at three fifty three. Woo! It's love doing it. good. Thank you guys so much. Thank yeah. You. Raising once again for all of you joining, we're raising money for homes for our troops. Um, and yeah, if you click the donate button, it it goes to a good cause. So yeah, check it out. Is there is there a link to it? Uh, there to already there. I put a link in the description, Perfect. and yeah, so it says donate, and then you could just click there and go to the homepage. Um, so so there is no. Young Kree spinoff, yeah, I know, it, I know it's not confirmed, but if there was, what would it be, what what would you want to see from it? Man, I have zero expectations. That's all I'll say. Uh, it, I I am just, I would be, you know, beyond the moon if it happened anyway. Uh, I'll let the I'll let the fans, you know, discuss that. You know, the fans are, you know, so so good at coming up with, you know, predictions and and kind of 
you know, looking into things and man, the, the, uh, I mean, the things that they've already speculated about the things that happen in, in season three, episode 10 has just been blowing my mind. Yeah. <laughs> the, I mean, the, the, the stuff that they've been coming up with, you know, they're like, no, this didn't happen. This definitely happened. And it's like, oh, I, mean, I, know it's like I love the fans. So it's like, I'm just going to leave that up to the fans and just, and, and I, I love seeing like what they would love to see. So if it happens, I'm just going to go with what they say, because, you know, it's all, it's all them. It's all for them. Yeah. Maybe for the fans. So, so yeah, I have, I have no requests. It's just whatever they want. Uh, guys, let's, you know, let's drop in the comments of John, Josh, and Aiden. We want to crease spinoff. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate the support. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I, I, you said you were a Star Wars fan. Are you aware of what, like, like, you know, like what Star Wars is doing right now with they have the movies and then now yeah. they have 10 shows, one on Ahsoka, Obi-Wan. I'm so excited for uh, Rangers of the New Republic. I think that's going to be so sick. Also, I'm, dude, I am over the moon excited for, uh, for uh, oh my gosh, why am I going blank? Obi-Wan? No, 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 no. I mean, yes, of course. Boba Fett? But uh, no, the, the, the Rogue One. Uh, oh, Cassie and Andor. Yeah, the Andor show. Dude, the Andor show is going to be amazing. Rogue yeah. One has been like my like one of my favorites, like definitely up there when it comes to like the Disney era. I just I loved how it felt like like a gritty war film, like espionage, spies, and now that that they're going to have an entire series about that. Also, also I um I think his name is Diego, the actor who plays yeah. Andor. He he was just so good in it, and I can't wait to see that. I think that's the one that I'm most excited for. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm a yeah. I'm for sure a Star Wars fan. I'm I'm super super stoked for that. Did you watch Mando? Of course I watched Mando. Of course I. Did. Okay. Well, second season was amazing. The for, man, dude, the pie, the the first episode of the second season. Oh my god! Crate dragon? Are you that, kidding me? How do you do that in a, in a TV series? It, it felt like a like a big budget movie. It, yeah, I mean, it felt like a massive budget film. I mean, just what they're able to do with television now and like with, you know, with the technology that they're using and the volume, it just, I remember watching season one of the Mandalorian and there was that shot that he was, you know, he was like kind of, you know, fixing his, his injury and like, and baby Yoda comes up and like tries to heal him. And they were sitting in front of that sunset. And I'm like, man, this is the longest, how did they get this scene to work? Because it just looked so real. I mean, it really looked like he was there, like, you know, with the sun setting in the horizon. And then when I found out the way that they shot it, I was like, this is a huge game changer. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I love The Mandalorian. And I'm so excited for the future of Star Wars. Yeah. So excited for the future of Indiana Jones, too. We'll Five see yeah, and, we'll the see there, and the game. And the game. Right? You heard about oh, yeah. that? I just posted about that the other day. The fact that they're coming out with an Indiana Jones 5. Have you ever played the Indiana Jones game, uh, Emperor's Tomb? I played... Staff of Kings. Yeah, that was on the Wii or something. Yeah, I played on the Wii. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Emperor I went to Lego. Came out on like PS2 and Xbox. Yeah, and it was this awesome game. It's it, if you're an Xbox guy, it's it's on the Xbox Store. It's like ten bucks or something like that. Amazing. Is it Xbox One? Yeah, it's it's on the store, so you can oh. play. Uh, I believe so. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, no, it's it's an incredible game. So the fact that we're getting another Indiana Jones game. It's going to be awesome. An Indiana Jones movie with like potential spinoffs that they're talking about. Yeah. It's just, it's a good time. It's a good time to be a fan for sure. Yeah. I'm glad that they said, um, I don't know if you heard, but they confirmed there won't be any more, like they're not going to continue like Indiana Jones six after like, yeah. I just, I, no, Harrison no. needs to wrap it up. Yeah. It needs to be Harrison. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, let's do one more of your questions and then let's open it up to the comment questions. For sure. For sure. Okay. Let me, let me find a good one. Um, without getting into too spoilery. Um, okay. Um, so when Chris beats up David, um, he says he's been fighting his whole life. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about like, like what kind of fights you think he got into when he was referring to that and like how he learned to fight? Of course. Um, 
when I think about this is this is just my interpretation. Uh, when I think about how he learned to fight, there's some people that are just natural fighters. Um, and so, granted, people thinking that he's a freak uh, is bound to boil over at some point. I'm sure that people had like you know thrown trash at him, basically just done like just just you know just those horrible things that bullies do, and. What I had done in my mind, I kind of built up that he had a really, really rough home life. And when you hear about what happened to his mother, you know, obviously that's going to set him off over the edge. And when I dove even deeper, I thought about like how he probably had an abusive dad. Um, and his, his dad would like drink and come home and like beat him, beat his mom. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible what happened. And so I really kind of tied like his natural tendencies to fight to probably the blood that he got from his father. Because his, I, I kind of built up in my mind that his dad was just an angry drunk that would get physical with people. So it's like it was always kind of in him. So when you combine like that fueled blood, that rage inside of you that can get let out with a kid that is considered a loser, that kid's just not going to walk away from any situation where somebody is teasing him. You know, he's going to face off. Um so yeah, he he had definitely gotten into fights before because he just he can't walk away from situations, and that's definitely a you know a, a downfall of Priest the fact that he you know he can't just turn the cheek like he's got to I mean he's he's Marty McFly when he gets called yellow, you know he you know gets called like a, a yellow belly or like chicken, so he's like he just can't turn away. Yeah. So, and that whole back to the future, the whole episode two was like, or at least the beginning was like a whole back to the future reference. That was pretty cool. Right? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I saw people saying, like, oh, Biff Tannen. Yeah. Biff Tannen coming in the diner. What are you doing, butthead? <laughs> what are you looking at, butthead? Yeah. And, yeah. and um, so I see a lot of people in the chat like asking like about the fights. Do you want to talk about, um, you could talk about. I saw somebody say, uh, Demi LP, is it me or was your nose different on Cobra Kai? Did you use makeup prosthetics to make it look like Chris? <laughs> no. uh, did my? I wonder. How, I wonder what they thought of my nose. Did it look bigger or smaller? I don't know. No, this was. It was. It was my nose. It was my nose. Yeah. Uh, the part? Um. Yeah. Like, if you want to talk about, um, maybe the we could like with the I restaurant fight, kind of fight, right? What? People were talking about the diner fight. The diner fight, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dude, that was the best day of my life. Really? Uh, I'll, yeah, it, it really, really was. I mean, I, I'm i somebody who has loved doing fake fighting my entire life, stage, stage combat. And like I said, I had been doing it with my dad since I was like four years old. So to show up on set and to meet Jesse and you know to get along with jesse so well and like to, you know just have jesse like talk about his dad and the way that he had grown up in the industry and like how much respect he had for his dad and like the action roles that he had done like i could tell that jesse was just like so fueled with excitement the way that i was so the fact that we were getting to do this awesome underdog fight scene that to me you know felt like you know the the indiana jones versus german mechanic scene in raiders of the lost ark uh, because this guy's just so hulking, uh, dude, we had to like resist from smiling while we were fighting each other. Like while the cameras were rolling, we had to resist from like laughing and just like punching each other and just having a good time because like, it was just everything that we had always wanted to do. I mean, it was like a classic, you know, underdog versus bully fight scene. Yeah. So it, was, it was just constantly blowing our minds and, and, you know, Marty being there. I mean, it was just, it was just so much fun. And, 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 uh, Hito and Janelle were there and they were just guiding us the entire way. And, and, uh, they, you know, they were just amazing. And I learned that choreography that day. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think Jesse had like gone in like the day before and learned it. And then I couldn't go there until the next day because I was working on something in LA. And so I land, uh, I meet Jesse and then we go off and do the diner scene. And I'm wondering, I, I go off and talk to Janelle because Janelle and I had worked together before on a show called Casey Undercover. She yeah. doubled, she doubled for Zendaya. Uh, oh, wow. so I, I had fought with Janelle before. So That's I go crazy. to Janelle and I was like, um, are we gonna learn the, uh, 
are we going to learn the fight scene? And she was like, she's like, I've seen what you do. You're, you'll pick it up just fine, but we'll learn it over lunch. And I was like, okay, sure. And we did. We learned the fight over lunch. And then that we went, whole thing? Yeah. You know, you know anything and you just learned. I didn't know the day that I showed up and while I was shooting the, the scene where I was being like meek and sweeping the floor in the diner, I still hadn't learned the fight choreography. Oh my and God. Over lunch, I had my spaghetti or whatever I had. And then we, we pushed all the tables aside, like in the lunch trailer and we learned it right there. And then an hour later we went off and shot it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Um, you have a little competition here in the chat, by the way. Oh, like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> look at that picture. Oh, yeah. Look at that whole, like, what is, what is that blue steel that you're pulling off, Jesse? Get out of here, bro. What's up, Jesse? <laughs> so are, are you ready for round two? I'm ready. Hey, whenever. Name the place, fella. Name it. <laughs> That'd be cool. It. That'd be yeah. cool if you guys do like, even if it's not like for the show, like just uh, like something for the fans, like round two. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't the first time that they had fought. Who knows? Who knows? And it, I, maybe it wasn't the last. I don't know. We'll see. Ooh. Um, let's let's find another one. Have you seen another one that's that's good? Um, I, this one's good because I know you. I know you posted about it. Um, what are your thoughts on the season three soundtrack? I have no words. Yeah, um, for for what those guys did, I just I one of my favorite tracks from this season is uh, "Live or Die, Man." Have you listened to that track? Yeah, it's so good. One of my favorite composers is Michael Giacchino. Me too. Um, oh, he's so good. Lost. And, oh, oh I've, I listen to Lost. <laughs> I listen to music from Lost all the time. I'm such a fan <laughs> of that music. It's Me so too. I've watched Lost like ten times. Best work. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, but, uh, but no, liver die man straight up sounded like a Michael Giacchino score. It was incredible. And the fact that they were like actually using like a 90 piece orchestra or something like that, get out of here, dude. It was insane. And then once you get to, um, duel of the, yeah, Snake. duel of the snakes. Oh my gosh. That whole mega edit that they did is so epic. So I'm just, I'm so excited for what they do in the future. Like they need to get a Star Wars series or something. Like they, I mean, they, those guys are incredible at what they do. So yeah. it's so cool because like, I remember when I was first listening to Cobra Kai and like there were those little like guitar riffs and stuff and like some techno stuff. So when I first listened to the soundtrack, I was like, this is unbelievable. I can't believe that, that, that they're doing this. I mean, this is, I mean, that. I mean, there's, there's a part of Duel of the Snakes that sounds like straight up like a, like a Williams, like a John Williams piece. Yeah. It's insane, the stuff that they did. So. Yeah. Were, were you aware of, um, Awake, you know, you know, Awake the Snake, the track, right? Were you Let's aware of that whole thing? This. Let's talk about this because I, you know, I hadn't really dove that deep, um, into the previous soundtracks. I had listened to them. But I didn't make the connection because every time Chris was on screen, you hear the, uh, oh gosh. It's like, like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. No, no, that's, so that's Chris's soundtrack. And then there's. Oh, the, yeah, oh young Chris. It's like, boom, 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 boom. Like on the French horns. I'm yeah. The, so I was thinking that that was like young Chris's theme. And that's been always been like a huge dream of mine is to eventually have a theme yeah and like all the characters in lost like they all had like their own specific themes and <laughs> like, i hope my i hope a character that i do has a theme so i think it's young crease's theme you talk to them did they confirm that they they said it was it was young crease's theme from like the flashbacks so you got you got your theme, I got my own theme. that's your theme though yeah. it's crazy <laughs> so happy. yeah no that that theme is is beautiful especially like on a single like uh like french horn just incredible yeah so that's pretty cool yeah and then you know challenger at the end when um when crease challenges them to the tournament you hear that theme it's like a piano version it's the same theme you oh that's right yeah that's cool. yeah well it's cool because it, it kind of it doubles as a young crease theme but also like the origins of cobra kai and like the establishments of cobra kai but i think my favorite believe it or not it's not when young crease well, no, I can't get into that territory. But anyway, there's 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 a moment when there's a character from modern day 
that is going down a path and they're making a choice and that theme plays. And I just thought that was so beautiful because this character is going down the same path that young Kreese went down. And I thought that was, that was brilliant use of, of light motif for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the, the, those guys are, it's Zach, it's Zach and Leo, right? Yeah. yeah. Zach Robinson, Leo Varenberg. They're, they're hats, amazing. Hats off. They're incredible. incredible. Yeah. I love their stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I have blue eyes. What? I have blue, you see uh, blue eyes. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Well, speaking of the fights, do you want to um, talk about the the last fight? Yeah, I won't go into details about the last fight, but all I'll say is that it was a dream come true. So I thought that we couldn't top the first fight at the diner. Yeah. But then everybody watching, I'm sure, has has seen 310. But once we got to the last fight in 310, I read the script and I'm like, holy cow. Like it, it blew my mind. I was like, the the parallels to Indiana Jones here are insane. Um, so much so to the fact that there was a moment where uh, there was the camera was behind me and tracking me to where I was going. Um, and you, you're gonna love this. Uh, the, like the the parallel to Indiana Jones was so so amazing and and so like thick that there was a moment walking up. Uh, that the camera kind of pushed in on my hand and I twitched my hand the exact same way that Harrison Ford twitched his hand before he went up and switched the bag with the golden idol, he switched the golden idol with the bag. So that was pretty cool. But that fight, man, we had so much fun. That was a, that was a, that was a very, very cold night. It was raining like on and off uh, and getting to work with uh, Terry Serpico was amazing because we both just gave it everything we had. Um, yeah. And we were just loving it. And Terry is Terry started out as a stuntman. So he's been doing this kind of stuff like for, you know, majority of, of his career. So it was a huge honor uh, to do something like that with him. It was a blast. And you were working with the snakes in that scene. I, yeah. I, a lot of people were in the chat were asking about that. Do you want to talk about because there was a lot. Of, I see a lot of comments that it's CG. I so thought it was CG. Without spoiling anything. Uh, the... <laughs> Yeah, the reptiles were real, and there were about there were over a hundred of them, and they were brought in in like these big tubs, and they were just slow, like one after another. Like there was like as soon as we were thinking that there was like like that was it, they just kept come like they just kept coming, they just kept pouring them in to the point where they were starting to like crawl out, uh, and they they would have to like oh wranglers wranglers, and we would have to like go in and like put them back. Oh my God. Um, I don't know why I said me. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't touching this. Uh, I, I played with. A, I played with a little. Uh, a little boa. Um, it was super cute. I like, I like snakes. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, you like snakes? I do. Sharks. Uh, are, sharks are my biggest fear. I. I don't like going in the ocean. I'm not a. I'm not a fan of that. I, I, sometimes I get caught up if I'm in. If I'm in the water and I'll be like up to my neck and I'll be having a good time and the next thing I know I'm like. How do I get out of here? And then I leave because I just yeah. uh, I do not I do not uh, I do not like water where I can't see the bottom. Just yeah. Anyway, uh, do you see any other good questions? Um, let's see. If you see any, you could just shout it out. Cool. Um. Oh, where was the flashbacks filmed? You said Atlanta. Atlanta. So, oh, this is this is kind of a cool fact. Uh, almost all of the Vietnam stuff was shot just in a lot right next to the festival. You know what I'm talking about? Like the whole like putt putt place, like with the with the Ferris wheel and stuff. Oh wait, the festival from season two, like Valley. Well, uh, you know, there's there's a couple characters that end up like going there and like sitting outside. It's season yeah season two it's the same one it was it was in a, a lot like a you know a big like grassy plain right next to that area oh, golf and stuff golf yeah yeah so we so oh. we that place for like our home base and all that stuff was just sh was shooting right next to and like at some point there was like there was a uh there was a we were the second unit and the first unit was off shooting stuff you know for episode 10 literally right there um 
so that was pretty cool. Yeah. So they, they did it uh, as good job as I mean they did a great job at like trying to make it really feel like Vietnam like they, they put a lot of foliage in and stuff and you know tried to like you know angle it so that there wasn't like too much shown like I, I think they did a great job yeah. yeah they built all of that from scratch yeah it was amazing they like they cleared land uh the final scene like like they you know they dug all that out and stuff I mean it was you know they did a fantastic job and you said it was covered right it was covered the um the pit um yeah yeah so when we were when we were doing that all like it was completely covered you know we weren't gonna fall in or anything like that but we did get to like look in uh, quite a bit, quite a bit what, when you, what, yeah when you looked in like compared to how we saw it in the final product was it was nowhere there were well there were a lot of fake ones um but all the like the real live ones were like down at the bottom, and like with CGI, they I think it looked incredible the way that they made it seem like there were so many all around. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Yeah, um, let's see, let's look for more. Oh, um, it can I pull up this question? I this is a good question. Did you do all the stunts by yourself, or did you have a stunt double? I did have a double, um, and that's that's the greatest question ever because you weren't able to see the double. So yeah. If you have to ask, then they're doing their job incredibly well. Uh, yeah, I had a I had a couple doubles. I had a double for uh, one, two, and three. All, always standing by. I mean, the you know the stunt teams are incredible, and like you know they they're always there. You know, it's it's safety first. So if there's ever a moment where there's even potential of somebody getting hurt, you know, they're the ones that you know they're just always there standing by. Uh, there was there was a double for the diner fight. There was a there was a double for three ten in the end, and they did such a good job because they looked so much like me, <laughs> uh, where where you you could barely tell uh, you could barely tell the difference. So yeah, I actually I wanted to be a stunt man at one point. Really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so fun. I mean, the fighting is the best part. Absolutely. Was it Indiana Jones that inspired that? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Of course it was. Yeah, that's that's all I ever wanted to do was was get into those kind of brawls and stuff like that. In fact, there's there's an Indiana Jones stunt show in Disney World that I remember seeing when I was like four or five years old, and that was one of the first things that I ever wanted to do. Yeah, Indiana Jones in that stunt in that stunt show. In fact, uh, when I was working on a show called Sleepy Hollow a few years ago, my stunt double in that was Indiana Jones in that show. Oh wow! <laughs> a million questions for him. It was awesome. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I always wanted to make an Indiana Jones fan film. That's my uh, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. That's my goal. So, uh, what was your favorite young Kree scene? It's got to be the opening of Three Ten. Uh, yeah. It gave me such an opportunity just to watch and observe and listen. Um, and uh, I, I hadn't really gotten many opportunities to do that before. But it's really just kind of Kree just looking around, being like, okay. How am I going to get out of here? What am I going to do? And that was that was for sure my favorite. And you had the Cobra Kai logo pop on you. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. That so awesome. Yeah, I was I was lucky enough to have that happen twice. Uh, yeah. so, so my mom was like, "I gotta get it. I gotta get that framed." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. How, by the way, how much longer do you have? Uh, uh, let's 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 go for you know about another ten or fifteen. All right, cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, where do, I saw a question. If you see anything, you could just shout it out. Sure. Um, yeah, I saw. I don't know where it went. Okay. Happy, happy birthday, Bill. I just. I don't know. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> uh, so Amanda asked, "Do you have any sympathy for Kreese? He seems misunderstood and a tortured soul. Do you think he's a villain or being mistreated by the people around him? Does he deserve a second chance?" I think everybody deserves a second chance. Um, Kreese really sums it up. There's one line that that I that sticks out to me. It's it's not my line. It's 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 Marty's line, uh, and it's in episode two. And he says to his students, he says, uh, "Sometimes the world can be cruel." That's why you need to learn to be cruel yourself. And to me, that sums up everything. Uh, somebody that has been lived such a tortured life and has been attacked 
every which way he looks. Uh, and, you know, being in Vietnam, not never knowing when the attack is going to come, you come back and it has stuck with him his entire life that he always needs to have his walls up and he always needs to strike first. And he always needs to take every single opportunity that he can to survive. And in this, these situations that he's gotten in with Johnny and Daniel, it has required action from him. And he's lost too much. And he has faced so much heartbreak and so much turmoil over the years that he can't bring himself to feel that again. Uh, it doesn't justify anything he does. Uh, I, but of course he's misunderstood. And of course there is, you know, there's a lot of room to like look into his past and why he does things. And luckily we get a chance to, to see that in this. And, and that's what I, I hope people got the most out of it is just a basic understanding of why Chris the way he is. You don't have to, you don't have to agree with him. <laughs> yeah. Chris is, he's a bad dude. And, <laughs> and you don't have to, uh, you know, feel sorry for him, even though there are some people who, who feel sorry for him, luckily, in this season. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, just to get a better understanding of him. And I think we pulled it off. I think we pulled it off. Yeah. He tried to kill Daniel and Johnny, like murder them. Nah, he's misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> it was an accident. He and Ashley killed him. Yeah. Um, and, what? What, do you, what, do you, what is, there, is there another one that you've seen? Uh, I'm trying to look. Um, favorite scene of season three that is not mine it's it's gotta be i think it's episode six when johnny is talking to miguel about like his profile and stuff that's, that's probably the best in my opinion i think billy just killed it in that scene that was like a highlight for yeah. me yeah he's god he's so good in the season he's so good yeah he's amazing i love that scene and a lot, of, a lot of great Johnny and Miguel stuff this season. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it was kind of like season one again. Like I like that aspect. Yeah, their one-on-one -on -one trainings. It's good. Um, I see. Oh, who's? Oh, you said your favorite character is Johnny. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, Johnny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see some questions about Betsy. Do you want to talk about working with Emily? Oh, Emily. Emily was so great. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely want to mention this to her, uh, mention this to everybody. Uh, Emily, um, Emily Marie. Yeah, she was, she was such a sweetheart on the set. Um, and it was so funny because it was, it was unfortunate because like me and Jesse were like getting to like brawl and she was just there having to say, stop, stop. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> But she killed it. She did such a good job. And and in our uh, in our scene where I'm going off to Vietnam, uh, you know, she really got to show. You know, she she really showed her vulnerability in that scene, and it was it was great. Yeah, she was she was a really really uh, pleasant soul to be with. Yeah, she was super sweet. Um, yeah. it's fine. Let's do a few more. Okay. Anybody? Anybody? Hit us! Hit us with some good questions. Yeah, let's get some uh, really tough questions. Spoiler light. Let's let's keep the spoilers light. <laughs> uh how about this one? Personally, as Barry, are you Cobra Kai or Miyagi Do or Eagle Fang Karate? No. People are gonna be surprised here. I gotta go Miyagi Do. Ooh. Seriously, I've I've you know I was I was bullied a lot when I was a kid. Um you know, for being into acting and like doing musicals and stuff, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the norm, like where I was from. And so I always kind of had like, you know, a, you know, a, had a lot of walls up and a lot of frustrations when it came to bullying. And I would always, I've always tried to been somebody, I, I've tried to be that person that can um, make everybody happy and resolve everything peacefully. So therefore I feel like I would be much more inclined to join Miyagi-Do and not get physical until I absolutely have to. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at bottling up the emotions and stuff and, and not acting, you know, irrationally. So Miyagi-Do for sure. Yeah. I'm Eagle Fang all the way. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I find that balance. Yeah. Yeah. I, Eagle Fang. I love, uh, you know, the scene from the beginning of episode eight where he, um, it's like cutting from all three dojos. Johnny's giving his whole speech. You got to come in like an eagle and just 
grab them with your face. Yeah. He's making up random stuff. Yeah. So he doesn't know what he's talking about. By the way, um, before we keep going, just a reminder, we're at $368 raised for Homes for Our Troops. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, everybody. And um, yeah, uh, please donate if you can. So yeah. um, how many more questions do you? Uh, let's, let's, do, let's do a couple more. Okay. A couple more. All right. Let's look, find a good one here. Fill them in, people. Um, let's see. How about this one? What was your reaction when you were told that you had been cast as young Crease? Were you astounded that you would play such a significant character who has had a tough time in the past? That's a good question. I actually found out that this character was young Crease at the end of my first callback. So this is when I was still going out for Jared because in the audition scene, there was this scene where he said, you don't show mercy. He's like, no, yeah. He's like, and he was like going on and like he was teaching like in a dojo. And side note, like when I was reading these scenes, I was trying to figure out where all this stuff fit in because I had no idea what they were doing. Yeah. So like, there was a diner and he was going off to war and I'm like, what character in Cobra Kai is going off to war? Uh, and so eventually at the end of my uh, second callback, they told me, this is young Crease," And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Now it makes sense. So that was when the pressure was really, really on. So that's when I kind of went back and started like watching Marty and stuff and watching Karate Kid again and like really studying and looking up clips from Cobra Kai. And I was able to channel him enough as I could at the time, I didn't realize how much they wanted, you know, this to be a, uh, an impression of Marty, but I definitely channeled Marty in the audition with the big three. And I think, and I even did the whole, you know, standing like that. So yeah, when I found out that I got it, I, my, there was, there were a lot of nerves and that's when the pressure started to set in like, man, fans will either love this or hate it. Uh, and luckily they loved it. So I was excited, but also equally as nervous. Yeah. Who did you work most with um, with the writers? Like who directed your, more of your episodes? Uh, I Well, Josh directed the very last one. And then I believe it was, it was either all three of them or um, I know, I think it was, I think it was John, John and Hayden directed the first. And this is so terrible, but I'm, I'm going blank on the director's name of episode six, but he killed it. Yeah. He was wonderful. Um, yeah. So, so Josh, uh, got that last one. So like, as you know, like he had a lot to juggle, uh, but I think he, he did it in an excellent way. And John and Hayden and Josh were there as well, uh, for the first episode. And they really kind of had that job of, you know, kind of molding me into what they, what they needed. And it ended up being way more different and way more meek, uh, than I had ever expected them to go. So, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, one more. Let's make it a good one. Uh, here, I'll, you can pick it out. Whatever you think's the, the best one. Oh, gosh. And by the way, we just reached $400. Wow! That that oh. that, that deserves a... Uh, um, that deserves a round of applause. Thank you, everybody, so much. Yeah. We, we weren't sure how much we would get to, and that's that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, that, this, that this moment reached that. That's Thank you so much. It's going to such a great cause, and we really, really thank all of you. Yeah, it's really great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Maybe we could get a young crease line for that. It's your favorite line. You want to? Oh, a young crease line? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. That. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, gosh. Uh, you give me one, and I'll recite it for you. Um. I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't remember the whole thing, but at the end. Oh, wait. Mm. I, yeah, I guess we can't. We can't do that. <laughs> or, uh, no, or no mercy. Uh, how about I just how about I just say I'll, I'll do it in my best crease voice. OK. This is slogan. Strike first. Strike hard. No mercy. There we go. That was good. That was good. OK, we'll take one more question, guys. And you, you, there you, you got a you got a crease impression from Barrett. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, you could just pick it out and I could put it up. Let's 
Sorry, just trying to... Oh gosh, people are probably commenting right now. Uh, you know what? You know what? Let's just leave it at that. Let's let's yeah. That'll be my last thing. Okay, cool. That should have been my last thing anyway. <laughs> okay, it was good. Good way to end it. Good way yeah. to end it. Yeah, we got to four hundred. I had I had the uh, yeah I had the you know I had the impression there at the end. That's that's a good way to end it. I think. All right. All right. Cool. Well, thank well, you. Thank you, thank so you. Much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm honored. This is this was a great interview. Once again, you know you weren't in season one and two, so it was um, cool to find out all this new stuff. And I wish you the best. I wish. Um, I hope we see you again in season four or Let's hope. other stuff. And um, oh. and everyone, thank you for your donations. Um, is there anything you want to end it with? Uh, I I guess I'll just say stuff that I have coming up. Uh, everybody keep uh i'm i'm on instagram at barrett carnahan 210 um that's what i'm most active on uh and just as far as stuff coming up i'm working on something in dallas right now that i that i can't uh mention what it is uh but it's gonna be pretty pretty cool and then we shot a pilot back in 2019 for peacock called one of us is lying and it's based on this young adult book that has been on like the bestsellers list of young adult hardback for for years at this point it came out in 2017 by karen mcmanus called one of us is lying uh and that we are shooting that later this year uh i'm really really excited about that and that should be on peacock at some point this year uh so that is going to be a really really fun uh teen like mystery thriller it's going to be a great show uh and annalisa is in it oh awesome yeah. Annalisa Cochran is in it, uh, you know, who plays Yasmin. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's going to be, there's going to be some, you know, Miyagi verse. Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> and you'll be, you'll be posting this on your Instagram for like fans who want to. Sure. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, guys go follow Barrett and um, yeah. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your donations. It's it's this has been awesome. Thank you. For sure, for sure. Now I I end my videos and my streams with a line. It's a Cobra Kai line, Cobra Kai never. So if you want to take us out, Cobra Kai never dies. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm waiting for you to give me the five. I will. Oh, well, like that? <laughs> Cobra Kai. Never does. There you go. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Everybody. All right. Bye, guys.